Let us welcome Hall of Famer Pablo Huffaker. All right. <laughs> now, nah, man, I can't, I can't thank these guys enough, you know, for all the hard work that they've put into, you know, putting together all these videos and stuff. It brings back just a, just a boatload of memories to me. You know, you watch the videotapes of all the other guys that have run, and, and, you know, for 30 years this has consumed my life. This is all I've done, and, um, and it's been awesome. And for these guys to, you know, to put forth so much effort into building the museum, gathering all the information they have, and, and putting it out there, it's awesome. And all the great fans that have shown up here, you know, that they've supported us all these years and, and you know, made us become what we have. You guys are great, too. So give yourselves a hand, you know, for coming out and supporting this museum. And these guys definitely, you know, Ross, <laughs> Alan, all, all the great people here, Jeff, all the, all the work you've done. Give these guys all a hand for all the great, great effects of, the, of this museum. All right. <laughs> so I got that part out of my way. <laughs> that and definitely the guys here at the Cruise Museum for, um, for hosting this and for, and, and for giving the museum a, a place to exist. That's really pretty awesome. And um, I'm, I'm humbled when I'm in a room with so many of my old friends that, you know, some people I haven't seen since 1991. And, you know, I didn't know if I was, you know, could take the time to come here this weekend. You know, we're really busy at home. It's the end of the year. You guys know how it is. We're scrambling to get ready to go. And my wife, Tina, she's like, well, you know, we, we ought to go to this deal. And, you know, she tugged me away. She told me a little bit about what it was all about. And, you know, some of the people that'd be here. And I came out here. And I'm so thankful for her for tearing me away from my work that I, that I somehow think so dang important. And to see all these great friends, um, people that I haven't seen, like I said, 20 years, 30 years, um, it's awesome. This, this alone was worth the experience to meet all these other, you know, the, all the old drivers. So um, it's definitely an honor to be inducted into this Monster Truck Hall of Fame, joining in the likes of the class of the guys from 2011 and being included with the class of 2012, you know, but I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a bunch of people I'd really like to thank here tonight, you know. I have to thank Bob Chandler there. He gave me the inspiration to ever get involved in Monster Trucks. Scott Stevens, who I worked alongside of, you know, right back there in the beginning, Building the first trucks, you know, a lot of guys, you know, we really haven't been all that flamboyant and, and, and in the, you know, public side for all these years with what we've done, but we've trotted along all this time, you know, being a part of this industry. You know, I've got so many great friends back home that helped us a lot in the early days, building those trucks, staying up late. You know, we didn't have anything to work with but a, you know, cracker box welder and a torch, and we'd cut and grind on that stuff till wee hours of the morning. Um, if we weren't behind Scott Stevens' house on his parents' back porch, bless their souls, I don't know how they ever slept. We were like right outside the sliding glass door. And um, to in my garage at, at the house where I, where I grew up, we'd work on trucks there. And, you know, all those folks really have made a difference for us over the years. But um, most of all, I have to thank my family. You know, they've endured, you know, my pursuit of a career in an industry that's required, that spent so many weeks and weekends away from home. You know, entertaining not them, but all the other families that come to the shows. So, you know, I love them for that. But most of all, I got to thank my wife, Tina, who's not stood behind me all this time, but beside me in what I do. She's worked so many hours, making me what I am today, and she's really been great for that. Um, she's the one that managed to get together all the memorabilia that... that has, that she's providing them here, all these videotapes. That's all Tina's hard work getting that together. Um, I had it all stuffed in a box. She had it stuffed off in boxes, and she spent hours and hours here in the last you know month getting this stuff together. And and it's, again, thanks to Ross and them for prompting us to do that because this dug up a lot of old memories, a lot of old videotapes that you know things I'd long forgotten. But you know, there's also there's been so many other people through the years that have had an impression on me in some way or another. And guys like um, 
you know, somebody we have mentioned here this weekend, Alan Jackson, AJ. He was really instrumental back in the early days in the monster trucks. Safety was around forever. That Man, that guy drug me around the country when I was wet behind the ears. First time I ever left Tomball, Texas or Houston, Texas to go out on the road. I couldn't have told you where Wisconsin or Iowa or any of those states were at all, you know, and uh, much less a Baltimore, Maryland. But AJ drug me down the road, showed me the ropes, um, you know, AJ was the first guy I ever said, you know, that Tina, I'm going to make her my wife. And um, so he was happy for me when I finally married her. And there's a lot of, lot of other people that have helped us out over the years, though. Um, I'll get you there in a minute. <laughs> All right, other guys, we've got to thank. Names we haven't heard mentioned either. Don Johnson, TNT Motorsports. He's the guy that came to, to Houston and actually got us involved in monster trucks in the first place. Gave us a chance at the first TNT uh, truck and tractor pulls to come kind of show our stuff. Come, you know, we were an intermission act when we first started. Like, you know, like many of the other guys here, we were we were just one truck at a truck and tractor pull, and you know, I'd actually been going to the truck and tractor pulls for years before that. I'd, I'd do the big huge parade. We have a big parade at the Houston show back years ago. We'd have like 50 trucks would show up. We did this fancy flag and intro deal. And, and you know, that was my first introduction into, you know, it wasn't monster trucks at the time. It was truck and tractor pulls. And, and we would go to that. And through that is where we ended up making the contacts that later on tied us in with Don Johnson, TNT Motorsports, that definitely gave us a start and, you know, gave us a good kick in the butt, got us going with all that. You know, Army Armstrong, I wish he was here tonight because he was the first guy I ever got to, you know, to do an interview with. You know, he, he was the first guy that ever pulled me out in front of a crowd of people and, and you know, got me to tell a story. He, that guy could tell some stories, too. I don't care whether or not. Sometimes you'd be listening to him and go, was that me he's talking about? Because he, <laughs> he's telling things and you're thinking, I wish I did that. But, you know, Army would make you sound good. Uh, Steve Woods, the guys at USA Motorsports, you know, those guys were my motorsports family for many years. They helped me secure some of my first sponsorships and things like that. It was during those years running with them, you know, the TNT Motorsport, or not the TNT Motorsports, but the uh, Renegades truck racing that went on back then. You know, I did, I did that for a short time in 88 and finished pretty good. You know, I think I finished fourth the first year they ever ran a point series, but Man, I was kind of thinking to myself, man, I'm going to go broke if I keep trying to race week in, week out. I was, um, you know, sometimes you get a paycheck, sometimes you didn't. And, you know, the guys at USA Motorsports took me in and gave me a place to run week in, week out, you know, for quite a few years after that until they ended up selling out. And they, they helped me kind of build a foundation and get, you know, build the foundation that I have today that I've built our business on and managed to survive when so many others you know, that have come before us, have, have come and gone, you know, it's, it is a tough business, no doubt about it. And I definitely, definitely got to thank Dennis Anderson right there, you know. 20 years ago, he had enough faith in us to let us take and put a gravedigger body on a truck, become part of the gravedigger team, and try to go out there and represent him and his brand, you know, to the highest standards. And, um, man, I can't thank him enough for that, you know. The largest portion of my career has actually been behind the wheel of a grave digger truck. And I thank Dennis for giving us that first shot at it, and um, and I've really loved it. So, you know, I've, I've, I love what I do. I've had a really unique experience to be involved in a business, you know, that started at ground level, you know, exhibitions at truck and tractor pulls, watching it grow into the first points races that we ever did with TNT Motorsports, to... Um, Monster Jam's World Series or the World Finals at Las Vegas. Man, that is, that is just an unbelievable event to be a part of. But to, to know where I started out, running over uh, you know, two cars, trying to get over two cars at a show, maybe in Jacksonville, Florida, somewhere like that, to what the industry has grown to today has just been a phenomenal ride. And I've and I really loved every minute of it. And... Um, I've been able to build a good business off of the industry of, uh, of building parts. You know, first I started building parts for our own trucks. And then, you know, by 
by building the stuff for ourselves, we're able then to turn that around and start, you know, selling it to the other competitors. So I have to thank all the guys out there that have ever supported me in that way over the years, buying products, having faith in what we build, and, and you guys have really helped, you know, make us survive through all this. But... But it's you know it's it's pretty overwhelming. You know I've had some really some neat deals over the years. Um, 2007, winning the World Freestyle Championship in Las Vegas. I thought that was just a highlight of a career. But honestly, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, following after Bob Chandler, the other guys that were inducted last year, Dennis Anderson, Jim Cramer. <laughs> And um, and everybody else, Mike Welch, to come in here with these guys this year, it, that is truly the biggest honor I've ever had in my career. And and I'm really, I love every minute of it. Thank you guys so much for voting me in. Um, I know it was a close race. There's a lot of guys that are, that are definitely deserving here. And for me to be even thought of and to be involved in this, I love you guys. So, you know, I'm not ready to hang it up yet. Um, I've been at this for 30 years. But my son Ryan, he's involved in racing. He kind of does it when he wants to. But I got an up and comer third generation. Uh, Ryan or Michael, my five year old grandson, says he's going to drive Papa's old monster truck one day. So <laughs> I can't hang up my helmet and fire suit yet, though. I got to make sure I still got a truck left for him when he's ready to, to go take after me. So, but. I always tell people, I do these little career fairs sometimes at schools and, and different things, and I tell them, you know, go out there and find yourself a job that you just love to do, something that you would do for free. Figure out how to get paid for it. You'll never have a work a day in your life, and that's the life I live, and I love what I do. So thank you guys so much. I've really, I'm really honored to be a part of this. This is definitely a highlight of my career. Thank you. All right, well, once again, uh, Pablo, congratulations. Well-deserved. We're happy to have you here, certainly. Um, roll into a couple qu questions real quick. I think a lot of people out here, unless they've uh, you know, had the opportunity to follow you very closely from the start, um, might not be familiar with how you and Scott Stevens had gotten started together and what led you to start building what became the first King Crunch truck. So uh, share with us briefly how you guys got started and how the King Crunch name came about. Well, actually, you know, um like I said earlier, Bigfoot was our inspiration to build a monster truck. In fact, we bought some of our first parts from them guys when they were in the Quonset hut up there. We drove all that. I told, I, told, I told Bob earlier, I said, I don't know why in the world we drove to St. Louis to get a rear steering pump. We could have drove three miles up the road to Granger's and got one, but, but thank you anyhow. But uh, <laughs> um, we built our first truck, and it was actually it was called the Eliminator. And, and it really yeah, it was on 48-inch tires. Two and a half tons, front and rear steering. We had a four-wheel drive shop there on the north side of Houston. We kind of built a truck, thinking, you know, this is really cool. We really didn't know what we were going to do with it. We had no idea that we, you know, you know were going to pursue racing monster trucks or doing doing shows or anything. So we wanted to build this big, cool, bad mud truck and and have it there for the shop. I can remember. I mean, the first time we ever got that thing running, we were out in front of the shop. Scott Stevens was driving the front wheels, I was driving the rear wheels, and we're doing donuts out next to the interstate, thinking that's just the greatest thing in the world. We're, we're laughing so much. I'm not sure we probably hadn't been drinking a little bit, but, um, but we had a blast. And that's kind of, you know, we, we worked tireless hours after, after hours building that first truck. We had a, the bay next door, and we'd, we'd beat and grind on that thing. And, you know, it was just a modified stock frame, which is what so many of us started with in the beginning. And, and we got that first truck done. We put it in the Houston Car Show. And like I said earlier, we used to do this, uh, the parade of trucks for the opening ceremonies for the truck and tractor pull series. One of the gentlemen that we knew with that had a contact at TNT Motorsports. And somehow, Don Johnson got word that, hey, we had this truck. So they came down and they saw the truck and said, we don't like that name. And um, and it's dull because it you know it was it was it was pretty truck it was black with you know cool lettering on the side but it wasn't anything flamboyant so we said um, well what do you guys want to do with it and they said well we'll send you some artwork here in a couple of weeks and sure enough some artwork showed up and 
I don't know if I could dig around and see if we could even find that anymore. If we did, we, we ought to send it here to the museum. But it was King Crunch. Crunch with a K. And this fancy orange and yellow paint job. So TNT actually designed that, fa that first paint job and, and sent that down to us. And we laughed at it all at first. You know, it was King Crunch, yeah, right, and all that. Well, you know, it's still here today. <laughs> it's not Scott Stevens. It's not any of the last two owners. But, um, but it's still here today. But that's, that's where the King Crunch name got started, and that's how Scott Stevens and myself first um, you know, got involved in monster trucks and got out on the... On the truck and tractor pull series, doing our, doing our stuff. Never had any idea that 30 years later, I'd still be doing the same thing. Man, we were living for the night then. We, we, we just had so much fun. We met so many great people. We had a blast and, um, and we lived for the day and lived for, the, you know, lived for that time. And, and I've been so fortunate to be able to live 30 years of doing that though. That's outstanding. That seems to be a recurring theme through a lot of the, the very successful veterans of the sport, you know, four of which we've been inducting this evening, is that uh, you guys do live for the day. You live for the day, you live for the night, you live for the fans. And while you always have one eye kind of facing the, uh, the long term, it's all about having fun in the moment with you guys, isn't it? And that's kind of what fuels you. Uh, no, most definitely, you know. Um I definitely, I've got a, a don't give up attitude on stuff. I don't matter if I, if I tear my truck up, I'm, I've still got a smile on my face. Let's drag that junk outside, get it back together to bring it back in. Because at the end of the night, the people that we're trying to please the most are those fans up there in the stands. We're having a lot of fun tearing these trucks up and and racing them and doing all that. But the the fans in the stands. You know, that's who we're out there to entertain. That's that's who we need to impress. I, I, I used to laugh at guys that come whipping into the pits out behind the building. I'm like, man, that's not us. You got to impress, impress some people out on the track out there. Do something cool out there. But, but no, definitely, um, we live for the moment. Uh, I love freestyle. I tell people all the time, I said, man, I work all week long so I can have fun for a minute to a minute and a half a weekend, and then I'll create another week's work, and away I'll go again. But it's for that minute and a half of fun. That's what we live for. That's outstanding. We're going to rewind back a little bit. The early 90s was a great time for you. You know, you came out of uh, kind of splitting off from Scott Stevens a little in the late 80s, really built the Just Showing Off name up a lot. You got hooked up with uh, the guys at USA Motorsports, like you said. In fact, when I was a kid in 1988, that's when I first saw you was running for USA in Kansas City at Arrowhead Stadium, and it made an impact on me, of course. Um, so you got the Purina sponsorship on your first tube chassis truck, so that was big for you, and especially at a time when the sport didn't have a lot of corporate sponsorship yet. So uh, share with us a little bit how the Purina deal came and then how you transitioned to uh, getting hooked up with Dennis because that was all about the same couple of years, was it not? Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, um, after I split up with Scott, then I had a truck called Just Showing Off, like you said, and I, and I campaigned it successfully for many years, you know, during those first TNT years of racing and then on down the road uh, doing just exhibition stuff and racing with, with USA Motorsports. But I'd always told them, if you guys can help me get a corporate sponsorship, you know, I'd love it. So the guys at USA Motorsports, actually the guys that came to me with this Purina deal and said, hey, we've got a potential sponsor for you. Do you want to do it? And and Purina came on board with us. And, and I can't remember now. I've got, I don't have the greatest memory in the world, but I think it was a two or three year stint. I got to do a lot of neat deals as far as food shows and stuff like that that I'd never been exposed to before and got to, you know, to to park my monster truck next to Dale Earnhardt's um, NASCAR, things like that. And and even back then, those guys weren't, you know, they were popular, but they weren't the superstars that they are today either. So, you know, I was right there rubbing shoulders with those guys doing that. And, you know, that, that money from those sponsorships definitely made things easier. It allowed us to improve our equipment over the years. And, um, you know, some guys weren't ever blessed with those those things like that. And we, you know, I've surrounded my pe myself with some really good people over the years. And, and from them, I've really, you know, I've, I've benefited. You know, Dennis's trucks are booked up. He just doesn't have anything available. And um, I said, well, before we do anything, let me call Dennis. Let me, let me talk something over with him. I know I've known Dennis for, for a long time. And I talked to Dennis, and we put together a, a deal for 10 shows. I was going to stick a grave digger body on his truck. We were going to fulfill, you know, trying to expand his brand out there, do 10 shows for Neil Darnell, and um, that was all it was for. But 20 years later, other than at the World Finals, I've never driven anything but a grave digger truck, and I'm, and I'm so proud of that um, today. You know, back then it was, it was a 10-show stint 
that it's definitely turned into, you know, it's turned into a lifestyle and into a career. That's fantastic. I would definitely say, aside from Dennis and, uh, you know, two of his up-and-coming family members, you are certainly one of the most iconic Gravedigger drivers. And, uh, you know, we're proud to have you in here tonight, and uh, congratulations. We thank you for your time. Well, thank you so much. You know, I'm not the, I'm not the greatest storyteller like, like <laughs> Mike Welch and Dennis Anderson can be. Them guys can really spin a tail and, ta and talk it good. I've always been kind of low-key and, and – just trudge along, do what I do, and I love what I do, though. I'm very passionate about it. And I thank you guys again so much for, you know, inducting me into the Hall of Fame. It's a definitely an honor. I'll, I'll cherish this moment forever. And like Mike Welch said, I guess if I died tonight, I'd be a happy guy. I feel like I've, I've, I've lived a dream. And, you know, it's, I also tell people, I've never had a bad day in my life. I love it. Thank you.